What happened to Falling Frontier, Starter Fox Studios' upcoming and promising science fiction real-time strategy game? There was actually, I mean, <laughs> there was actually a short trailer that got released during their summer fest, which highlighted the title's single-player campaign, but unfortunately, we haven't had any updates regarding its release date, but sadly, it even looks like the game was delayed, as it was originally scheduled to release during the second quarter of this year. But as we are nearing the end of this time period, it looks like Falling Frontier is nowhere to be found. So we made a little investigation and tried to see what happened regarding the status of the project, and and see if we could get an update regarding a possible new release window. But before we talk about that, I thought that perhaps not everyone is familiar with Falling Frontier, so I'll take some time to explain briefly what this game is going to be. Falling Frontier is a real-time strategy game made in Unity and set in the solar system in the distant future, where colonies of the other system engage in a devastating conflict. What is going to make this game so unique are going to be its incredible sense of scale, which ranges from an entire star system to the individuals who crew the ships of your faction, as well as a very interesting mix of macro and micro management, which will lead you to make grand decisions for your faction, while at the same time deciding each individual components of your new ship designs, or making sure that your stations have enough operators to keep your economy running. Of course, these are not new features, but the amount of details that we have here in this game is certainly where its potential lies. So, as you can see, Falling Frontier is quite an ambitious title, especially when we take a look at what it aims at delivering, and given that it is going to be Stutter Fox Studios' first title, it is therefore very important for the solo developer Todd Darcy to give the public a solid first impression by delivering a polished and compelling experience, which will then give future investors a good impression, which in itself is going to be very important for Todd Darcy to then be able to expand and hire developers and eventually create new titles. It was thus with this state of mind that Falling Frontier was delayed to a soon-to-be-announced new date later this year. We'll also note that this isn't the first time that Falling Frontier is being delayed, as the game was supposed to ship last year already. However, this time, the cause of the delay is quite different, as you're going to find out, and I think that it's going to be quite reassuring here. It is indeed very interesting to see that the Falling Frontier that was supposed to be released last year and that was eventually uh, published by uh, Star of Fox Studios themselves, self-published there as a result, is very different to the Falling Frontier that is going to be released later this year and that will be published by Hooded Horse. Last year, Falling Frontier was more of a sandbox role real-time strategy game located in a player-made custom solar system in which the various factions that would have populated them would have fought for supremacy. However, since then, Hooded Horse and Star Fox Studios have reached a publishing agreement and it appears that the scope of the game has changed quite a bit. For example, new ships have been created, but most importantly, a new campaign is being developed, something that was previously lacking and that a lot of players, myself including, were asking for. Of course, the creation of that campaign required some time and justified the previous delay. The ongoing delay, however, is very reassuring, as I said earlier, because according to the developers, it is a delay of polishing and extra internal testing. That means that Stutter Fox Studios are indeed in the final phase of the development and that we are much closer to the game's release than ever before. Todd Darcy did add that the last thing he wants is a game that gives the player um, the impression that it was uh, rushed due to some financial pressure because luckily this is actually not the case and it gives the solo developer the luxury of being to be able to take all the time he requires to, prov to provide us, the players, uh, with the experience he dreams of delivering and that is really exactly what he is doing. So there you have it guys, the reason why we can't play Falling Frontier yet, despite the release window uh, that had been previously announced, and I think that there are a couple of things that we, that we need to remember uh, while we uh, patiently wait for its release. First, it's okay for games to be delayed, it just means that in the end we'll get a better experience, and that when a developer develops a game also, uh, the development itself is subject to the well-being of the developers, especially if it's a solo developer, and especially here, uh, given the, the how crazy the past two years have been, we can never know what's really happening behind the curtains, right? So we'll have to be understanding here as well. 
anyway, that's all for this video. But let me know in the comment section down below, guys. Are you excited for Falling Frontier? Or have you wishlist it on Steam, perhaps? Or is it the first time you hear from this game? I'd like to know what your thoughts are. Also, a big thank you to everyone who liked and subscribed over the past couple of videos as it really helped the channel get some much needed traction. And if you think that I deserve it, don't hesitate to do it again as uh, it really helps us with the uh, algorithm here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. As always, I wish you a wonderful day. This has been the Eradicator and I will see you guys later.